Wait, so, uh, so I got the thing again? Yeah. So Wait a second, I'll just see if it's everything is right here. And here. Okay, you can press continue. Okay, so first try. Uh, what's the motivation behind the project? Well, I just want to show people why I spent the last years mostly working uh, towards that one fishing trip a year to the jungle. Why, like, uh, peacock bass fascinate me that much that I, like, uh, give up, like, a lot of time and uh, money in my life just to do those fishing trips. And I want to show people, like, how crazy those fish actually are and in, in what kind of uh, wild environment they live. So, yeah, pay attention. You might learn something even. <laughs> What makes this trip special? Well, it's like a, an exploratory trip. Like we go to a place that basically nobody has ever been before, except for the people that, like the native people that live there. To start from the beginning, we flew from Switzerland to Bogota, the capital of uh, Colombia. From there, you take another flight to Puerto Inirida, which is like a city on the outside of the jungle there. From there, we went at like 3 in the morning, we found ourselves with the group of, of uh, the four anglers that we were, plus some locals, like actually one guy from the city that organized the whole trip, together with the, in the, in the Guinness people that we're gonna visit. There were like two of them who were responsible for driving the boat. And the special thing is, we had to bring everything of, uh, with ourselves. So the whole boat, there was just like one boat, and it was loaded with like all the supplies for the week. So that's like, we had like big barrels of gas that we had to drive up, all the food, and also the drinks, which we later found out they forgot. So yeah, but it was, it was loaded like a packed boat. And it wasn't just for like an hour or two, it was like supposed to be like 15 hours in the end, it was like way longer, but yeah. So we started from like at 3 a.m. in the morning, pitch darkness in the port of Inirida. We just um, hopped on that boat, tried to find some space to feel like, to sit like more or less comfortable and up where we went. And the special thing is usually we we drive up the river like two, three hours to get to the camp and then you're there. You just sit in a boat, wait a couple of hours and you're there, you hop out and that's it. You're ready to go. But special on that trip was we had to cross like several rapids. On every rapid, we would uh, go onto land, unload everything that's on the boat, including us, and then we carry everything around the rapids 
and because we couldn't cross the rapids with uh, with the boat, neither we had to carry the boat too over the rocks, and which is uh, kind of uh, intense because that boat isn't as light as it looks like, especially with the motor on and everything. So yeah, it was pretty intense, and we had to cross like I don't know in the end 70 rapids or something. We were told like in the beginning it was five, but yeah. It's it's never like how they tell you in the end, so <laughs> that was pretty tense, but yeah, we made it somehow. Mm. On some like rapids, we were lucky to find like some of the locals that just like live in that area that would usually help us out uh, carry the boat. So they have more experience with that, and it went like way quicker than on the times we had to do it on our own. That was one thing, but at the same time, every time uh, like the places we had to get out to cross the rapids. They're like, they consist uh, mostly out of like those huge black rocks. And you can imagine with like, um, it was like perfect suns out weather. It was like hot. It was like 30, 35 Celsius, something like that. And then you walk like over like pitch dark rocks. And yeah, you, you probably can imagine how comfortable the whole the um, walking was because yeah the the rocks heat up and it heats up from above and it's just like a lot of heat to take in and at the same time you basically have nothing to drink because they're telling you yeah the the supplies are somewhere uh, packed so we can't unpack it so that was pretty pretty um tough actually When we finally arrived, we arrived at like 9 p.m. I would say. So yeah, we left in the dark and we arrived in the dark. But yeah, after after so much time just on the boat, you're just lucky to finally arrive there and get your feet on land. <laughs> There in this area, we are like deep, deep in the jungle, and it's actually like wild jungle still. So there's like dangerous animals around, and they're usually active by night. Like during the time we sleep, other like animals that could get dangerous. I don't like to say like dangerous animals because they usually don't really want to hurt us, but it, it could get dangerous if you're like uh, setting up the tents just like on one of the beaches there like we usually do but in in this in this case it was uh, safer for us to like just uh, set up our tents in the village where they are like um, prepared for such uh, visitors 
because they have like special dogs trained well not trained but they they hold dogs there just for the purpose to like have like um, alarm system by night in case some jaguars ran in the village to feed like on the chicken or whatever so We started the first day in like the lagoon we were supposed to fish for the whole week and of course we were all like hyped up and we expected to basically the fish just jump into the boat because we were told like there's uh, there ha there hasn't been nobody fishing there and the lagoon itself it looked just like amazing but after like the first two three hours of fishing we it it seemed like more difficult than than we expected it because I basically have, hadn't caught a fish yet. I had like a couple of followers, but I was far away from the craziness I was expecting. Then, like, I finally seemed to, like, figure out uh, one of the spots and I then caught, like, a really nice fish. It was, like, 19 pounds. And because I had, like, such high expectations, I, I didn't even really think, like, it was something special because I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to catch a lot of those. But then, like, a couple of casts later, I caught, like, a 17. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, now, now we probably figured it out, and it's gonna be, it's gonna be like that the whole week. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Woohoo! <laughs> otro, otro sal. Vamos a ver. Más grande. Más grande. No sé. Vamos a ver. No. Tiene 17. 17. Nice. Más pequeño. Sí, más pequeño. 
Eso, eso seguro que se llama el golpe. <risa> I even didn't pay a lot of attention, so that fish even slipped out my hand before we could properly take a picture. Because like, 17 pounder to me is still like a really nice fish, but I was just like, yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be fun now. It's gonna start, but I was really wrong because after that, we basically didn't catch much like for the rest of the day. I think we caught like we we found like fish on every spot, but was like just not in the desirable size that we were there for it was like mostly like smaller fish in the like two three pound range and i'm not personally not really interested in like uh, catching 50 small of those fish it wasn't really like what we were expecting to be honest The second day was actually even worse. We started like um, on the same spots where we had like the most success on the first day, but like on the second day, it seemed like even, even those spots seemed like empty. So we were like, okay, that doesn't make any sense. Let's move out the lagoon. We fished some of the main river, but yeah, we fished a lot of that, but we just couldn't like really find the fish, I guess. We will catch a fish or two like in a certain spot, but that's about it. And it was just like, yeah, we seemed a little bit of helpless and even like our guides, did, like the people that uh, lived there their whole life basically. And they didn't seem to have like uh, the real answer on why we, could, we wouldn't find the fish because usually they have to find the fish too for just for their survival. So. <laughs> um, I have mixed feelings, but yeah. He's caught a tropical disease, yeah. but he lived. Uh, so since he's still alive, we're gonna go up river and go after some, uh, some more big fish. I guess yeah. some of the other guys scouted up ahead and caught some fish and we had a pretty slow day yesterday. So we're, we're gonna get after it and hopefully Same. connect with some big ones. And hopefully not die. <laughs> Well, what we did is actually after the second day, because it it didn't seem like it it's, it's going to get better where we were at on the first two days. So we talked to the locals there and they told us about like another community, which is like around two hours upriver again. So we asked them if we could fish up there. And our community where we were staying, they agreed to bring us up there. But as, as I mentioned before, there's like every community owns like a certain part of the river. So in order to fish the upper part, we first have to like um, d ask for permission. In the end, like after some hours of discussion, they agreed uh, that they would uh, take us fishing for the next three days. So where are we? We arrived to uh Bakiro and Bellavista community. There yeah. are a, there, there are a native community of indigenous in the natural reserve Punaguay that is here in Guainia and there are the second um, natural reserve in Colombia because it's a natural reserve of indigenous people. And here we go. Welcome to Punaguay. Well, it definitely was, I would say, like, reflecting on the whole week, it was like, 
in, in the end, I think if we wouldn't have uh, made the change upriver, now there wouldn't be a movie because mm. we couldn't have uh, filmed like all the awesome stuff uh, down the river. So yeah, it, it was definitely worth it. I mean, like on the on the third day, like after the whole discussion thing, they wanted to take us to a lagoon that was actually like a cut off from the main river, like already for like some months. But they like um, the specialty about that uh, lagoon is like somehow that it's still deep enough so a, lo a, a lot of fish stay like the whole year in that lagoon even if it gets uh, cut off from the main river so they told us like because it's like uh, not that easy to get in to the lagoon because you have to drag the boats through the forest and yeah at first they told us it's like 50 meters, but in the end it ended up to be like over 500 meters, I don't know. When we first get there uh, to the shore, I just see like a big ass peacock pass, just like chilling there on the surface. I, I've never seen like peacock pass do that before, but he was just like hanging around between some trees. So Beto, like who was uh, walking with me, was like, "Man, you gotta, you gotta make a cast, you know? You, you got your reels here." just try it. I was like, first I didn't want to, but I was like, oh, it's, it's, it's a really nice fish. Let's do it. First cast, he just like goes berserk on the lure, but misses it. So I was like, oh, fuck. There, there was my chance, but I make another cast because the fish is still around. So finally the boats are in the water and we're already covered in dirt, we're sweating and that is, at that point I probably have to mention that we also had like, a, probably all of us had like a COVID or at least I had like fever and like headache as hell and but I was just like, yeah, let's go fishing now. Then yeah, it was just like amazing. We paddled out a couple of meters and you would just see like big, beautiful peacock bass like all over the place. And you could cast the lure and they would just like turn around, hit it, and it was just amazing to watch. So we had like action throughout the whole afternoon actually. So three casts in. Bad one. And stitch. And it looks Fascinating thing about peacock bass. Well, they're super strong, fantastic colors. Each one's a little bit different. So, you know, you could get one that's fantastic black stripes and yellow and green, and you get one that's blue. You get one with no stripes and the big hump on the head. They're really attacking lures hard and fighting super hard from the small butterflies all the way up to the big Tamensis peacock bass. The most vivid memory of the trip. 
uh, probably the lagoon where we were all catching fish in the pouring rain, fish after fish. That was spectacular. That was awesome. I've never seen, can't say I've never seen anything like it, but I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe only one exploratory trip that I've done that was as good or better. That one was in India going after Golden Masir, but this was as good as anything. Amazing, it was re really awesome. And exceeded the expectations that I had. Obviously they weren't that high, but you know, everyone caught really big fish. I caught my personal best peacock bass, big peacock bass on fly also. So that was great. After a, like the probably like my most crazy day so far in my life of peacock bass fishing, um, of course like the temptation was there to go again to that lagoon, but locals like uh, told us that they have like other spots that uh, they wanted us to show. So the second day up there, actually the fourth day of fishing there for, for the trip. We spent like mostly fishing on the beach. Even in the morning, like the first beach that we visited, just like next to the camp, we had like almost immediately on the first couple of casts we got, we would get bites, and from then on, it. Um, it went like that the whole morning. We had like a lot of, I lost a lot of fish. We caught some fish and it was like really entertaining. And we also tried like uh, another big lagoon that was like way easier to get in than like on the day before, but it seemed like empty. So we quickly changed back uh, in the evening to fishing beaches again. And we had a lot of fun there too. We had like Adrian um, filming the whole thing with the drone. So he would go in front and like check out the beach from above. And he could 
spot even like the water there is pretty murky but even with the murky water you could spot the peacock bass which were like really in shallow waters like you could see their green back so he would spot the fish and then tell me to where I would cast and like after after, after like watching the whole scenes that we filmed it, it's it's actually pretty interesting to see how they react to the to the lure because uh, while we filmed like we had like the battery was running out so we couldn't like film as much as we wanted but even the the couple of scenes that we got we had like a lot of followers actually that that you don't see if you're just from the boat but uh, watching the whole thing of, uh, from above on your laptop like later on it it revealed that actually like with fishing top water on the beach you have a lot of followers that that just don't want to eat the lure and i found that like um pretty amazing to watch because i thought like if you fish the loud uh, chopper lures like we did you usually get like if you get the attention of a fish it's it's gonna hit it but After like three days of amazing fishing up river, we were just like, yeah, we, we didn't have like a lot of expectations to be honest on the last day because it was, it was, uh, yeah, we knew like we weren't that successful on the first uh, two days, so we we're just like, yeah, let's let's uh, see what happens. But uh, luckily, we already got like a lot of um, footage and we caught some nice fish, so everybody's happy. So. Let's just have fun for the last day. So I told myself I just want to catch one last big fish. The morning started pretty slow and then we just like uh, ended up fishing for the smaller, the, the mariposa ones because there were plenty around and it was just like fun to catch, to catch some on chicks and yeah, like that you have like action every couple of casts. So we did that for a moment, but then like towards lunchtime, it started to rain and then I was like, I remembered what happened the last time it started raining, so I was like, yeah, I know one spot in, in that big lagoon where we always saw like big fish hang out. From then on, I was like, okay, I'm done. It was like the perfect ending to that trip. And now let's just get safely back uh, down that river. So of course we fished like until the last uh, daylight uh, that day too. But we, in, 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 in the end, we caught like a lot of smaller fish again. And now we just had to get back down and everybody was like really looking forward uh, to that of course because we knew we had like we had there's only one way and we had to get back the same way we, we came up so every everything went smoothly we were on time and we were all basically were looking forward to finally get back to the city to get some ice cold uh, drinks that we didn't have like for the whole week so on the last rapid there was like there's like those famous mountains for the for the guyana region that like a lot of tourists visit so there's like a mild rapid there that we had to cross. But um, for that one, uh, our captain was like, yeah, you don't have to, to take out um, all your stuff. Just get out the boat, you walk around the rapid and I, I gonna drive the boat through the rapids. I've, I've done that uh, a lot of times, it's easy. So 
we we just uh, went out, walked around, took some pictures of those mountains that everybody's talking about and everybody seems to love. And then we watched like our captain drive our boat with all our stuff in the boat still to the rapids. And we were like, okay, yeah, in five minutes we're done and we can take the la we can take on the last two hours to get to Inirida. So as we were watching uh, the mountains and to talk to each other, our captain, like in the worst uh, time possible, the engine of our boat fails and the boat, like the current drives the boat straight up to like, there's like one rock in the middle of the rapid and our boat gets stuck on that fucking rock. So we're just like, they're like, no. That can't be happening right now because everything, if they like knock over the boat and it actually sinks, everything's gonna be gone. Like, I, I really didn't care about my fishing stuff because that's replaceable. But when I realized that like all the footage that we filmed over that last week was still on the boat and it wasn't in like a waterproof case or anything, then I was like getting really worried because yeah, I, I was like, man, now we had like the most amazing fishing time and we got crazy footage, but now it's like, it's like, uh, it seems like everything's gonna be gone and we were like, but you can't do nothing. You're just standing there and watching. And, but luckily after like an hour and with like support from like some canoers, they were able to get the boat off the rock and through the rapids without uh, getting like a lot of water into the boat. So. It was like a couple of hours boat ride to Inirida and that was it. And we were back in civilization. And the first thing we did, of course, was like getting some ice cold uh, Gatorade because I was missing that thing for like the whole week. <laughs> it's like all I could think about when I got back, I got to get Gatorade. And yeah, we made it back.